Frag Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, baby, for another episode of Frag Tag Radio. And here with you today are your boys, Pradius. And we got Glass in the house. Back again for a guest appearance back in uh, VA to visit the family for the new back year. Back from Chicago for the holidays. Everything's been uh, going well, I trust. You know it, you know it. Uh, getting some gaming. So uh, b- before our, uh, this is a special edition episode, uh, one that was planned at the last minute. So uh, we've just kind of put together a small list of all the games that uh, D Easy uh, Glass Torch has been playing in the last year. So and then uh, we're just gonna run down the list and uh, get some, get some opinions there. Uh, but before we uh, hop into that, of course, want to get that plug out there for Xbox News by Bright AI. Great app, fast loading, zero force closes. You know, it's just great app it's awesome love it love it love it download it it's on android market by bright ai if you want if you're on ios you can catch us there through uh the stitcher radio app which that app's also on android too and uh as j ray would say uh if you have updated to ios 6 they now have uh, apple now has their own podcast app and if you search fragtag radio we'll come right up in there as well and then, uh, of course, uh, holler at us on the on the uh, on Twitter uh, with the the tweets from the street at Fragtag Radio, and on our own website FragtagRadio.com. Baby, all right. So, game number one. So, first one on the list, we got a couple of arcade games. Of course, uh, Minecraft. I'm waiting for that new title update for sure. Um, but they just added all the mushroom biomes and good stuff like that. You can got the food now and your health bar and stuff like that loaded up a few times finally got into uh the nether and explored more of that um still haven't played around with the mushroom biomes just yet although i have a couple seeds saved that i want to check out um yeah i found some pretty cool ones too yeah you'll have to write them down or send them to me yeah i, I think, love I think, checking out new seeds. i think one's called glacier and then the other one is like one zero zero one zero zero one zero zero one or something like nice, that. Nice, some binary. Yeah, definitely, definitely some cool seeds. So, um, what kind of stuff have you been uh, building? It's funny because most of I haven't actually. Uh, well, I played around with the uh, creation mode a little bit. Yeah, and that's really cool. I like that you can run super fast in that mode. I found that. like how you can fly. Yeah, so you don't got to stack blocks to exactly. get up high to build. I haven't built anything crazy. I haven't made any replicas or giant T Rex statues or anything crazy. Um, you haven't like uh, rebuilt the Millennium Falcon or nothing like that. So. Got a little too much time on my hands, maybe for something like that. Haven't but, uh, haven't completely done the whole world of the Game of Thrones down to the oh very no. last detail, dude. Some people, some of the Minecraft creations are out of control. Insane, dude. That's yes. what I'm saying. Like, uh, one person created like the whole world of Hyrule from the Ocarina of Time. I saw like, somebody did the entire city from uh, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, yeah. Um, from yeah, what was it called? Um, can't I can't remember the name of it now. I've seen some really awesome ones. I saw somebody... Did, Midgar. Midgar. Did you see the Gears of War 3 maps? I've seen somebody uh, made... Uh, I haven't seen Gears of War. Somebody maps. did a Minecraft that was uh, Gridlock. Really? It looked exactly like Gridlock. Yes. That's dope. Yeah, I've seen some Gears 3 maps in Minecraft that are pretty sweet. I think the craziest one I've seen is the one that I just mentioned a second ago. Someone completely recreated the whole world of Game of Thrones. Like, every single location is there. Like It's insane. It's insane. It's... It might, might be the, the hugest Minecraft map I've ever seen. I just can't wait till season three starts up. <laughs> I got a few more months to go for that one. Yeah, when does that start up? I think like May or March, I think. And what about the second half of the season three of The Walking Dead? When's that? February. 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 Yeah. That's gonna be awesome. Uh, I saw that they were having like some sort of a marathon of Walking Dead on New Year's Eve. Yep. I'm actually a little bit, I haven't seen the last two episodes yet, seven and eight, so yeah. I'm a little behind. I kind of know where it's at because people spoil things all day long on Facebook and stuff. So but. if you haven't been uh, been able to get into Walking Dead yet, the first two seasons are on Netflix. I'm sure everybody has Netflix by now. You can watch the first two seasons on there, and then the, the first half of season three will be on for the marathon on yep. New, New Year's Day. Eight episodes. This season's actually a lot better than I expected it to be. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it a lot so far. Yeah. I um I I really like how they're taking it a, a different direction than, than the books. Yeah, 
Because, like, in the book, You'll never be surprised if you yeah. already know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. And, I mean, I've read the book, so I know things are Things are way different. Go. Yeah, because, like, because, like, well, well, in the books, like, Rick and them had actually lived in the town with the governor. And the governor had, like, killed his wife or his son or something. And yep. Blah, blah, blah. And then, so, I like how... Uh, how that didn't happen. I actually like how his wife died better than the way it happened. Well, and the cool the thing is, is that Robert Kirkman, the writer, is actually involved in the show. He um, apparently, I think he wrote the opening episode and the uh, mid-season finale episode. Oh, so, really? Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, uh, that last episode was awesome. Yeah, that I've was heard, a I've heard. straight up battle going on there. Yeah, I'm excited to watch. I need to, when I get back home, I gotta get caught up on Walking Dead. I gotta get caught up on Dexter. I'm like three episodes behind on Dexter. Oh, that one episode of Game of Thrones where that with that giant battle was pretty awesome. The Battle of Blackwater. Oh, that, that's what that was when uh, old boy who's dating the chick who prays to the fire god or whatever. Like yeah. they they tried to invade the the main kingdom and they there. Had the liquid fire or whatever that whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the little the little king was going all crazy, and then uh, that that dude dog like just straight turned on him yep. and like hauled ass. Fuck you, motherfucker! <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Screw the king's guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit was hilarious. I love that show, man. I just hope that the they don't kill uh, the dwarf guy because that would. Just I be... think Tyrion will be around for a while. Yeah, if they killed him, man, he's then... one of the fan oh, favorites no. for yeah. sure. He, he's got to be my most favorite. But everything I hear, man, George R. R. Martin is good at killing off your favorite characters. So. In season one, I liked Ned Stark, and then he died right in the first season. Yeah. I was very upset. Well, from what I hear, this season, because you know that the third book they're split into two seasons. Right. And from what I hear, the third book is like the heaviest, and it's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of characters dropping dead, so we're going to see a lot of main characters dying in this next season, I think. Well, I guess maybe they'll be bringing in some extra, some some, oh, yeah, some, some the, new main characters. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And in the, fact, I think they kept a couple characters out of the last season just because they thought they had too many storylines going on. Oh, really? So introducing some of them at the very beginning of the next season. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that uh, to the the last season of Spartacus. Also, oh yeah, I thought that's, oh, yeah. that's going to be pretty cool. I finally got caught up on that. Yeah. Finally, it was really good. The new guy, he, he's obviously not as good as Andy, but he gets the job done. I'm not sure what it is about him. I don't know if it, he just doesn't have the same like passion in his character as the I don't, first guy. I, I, don't, I don't think he does. No. Yeah, it just seems like there's something lacking. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Nowhere near as good as Andy. Yeah, but yeah, so. Uh, Oh well, before we get in, into the games, the, the last movie I uh, wanted to get your opinion on what was you just uh, you saw the Hobbit? So amazing, amazing, and I will even venture to say that by the time it's over, it'll probably be better than Lord of the Rings. I didn't see it in the uh, high frame rate 3D yet. Right. I just saw the standard version. Um, so but tell me if you know about this. Jerry was telling me about the this. high frame rate, and and no, no, uh, Jerry was telling me about this, and um, I, I, I had I didn't even know this. Supposedly. Uh, Tolkien was rewriting The Hobbit at the time of his death and was like had like added like a whole bunch of more stuff to the story yes and, and then they're incorporating that into the movie yes and that's why they're making it three films and they have let me the first one that was two hours and 45 minutes long yeah and insane. I I was not bored at all I was on the edge of my seat like felt like a little kid watching it man like I was had a grin on my face like it was amazing um, and I think it's just a lot more lighthearted than Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's more family friendly. It's like a, a child's adventure novel, you know. Okay. So you get to see, um, you know, how Bilbo acquires the ring. And really, the the main two scenes I wanted to see in this movie, and I'm glad I got to see them both, was the riddles in the dark scene where he gets the ring from Bilbo, or where Bilbo gets the ring from Gollum, yeah. and then the scene with the trolls. And That's what's up. I got to see both of them there. I was really happy. And so. Uh... Is uh, the, the first half of the movie, like, is Bilbo not even in that, or is that like... No, he is. Um, the, you actually get to see Frodo for a, a brief second at the beginning. They kind of did, like, a, a bit of a flashback and then melded it into the story. Uh... So they're going to try to find little ways to show you the other characters and stuff, just to bring them back for split scenes and stuff. Right. But right. Uh, the guy they got to play, Bilbo, the younger version, he did a really great job. That's um, good. I loved all the dwarves. The dwarves were hilarious. Um, it was really good, man. I'm telling you, I was felt like a little kid, dude. It was. I already want to see it again. Um, but I'm gonna when I see it again, I'm gonna go see the high frame rate version because I want to see 
visually how different it is than the standard version. So did you see it in 3D or? No, no, no. The, I, I guess they have several different ways to watch they it. They got the IMAX standard, 3D. There's yeah. IMAX 3D. There's the high frame rate version. Yeah. Um, everything I've been hearing about the high frame rate one is interesting, though, because they're saying that it looks so real that it almost is fake. Like, you know, when everybody got their HD TVs and watching Blu-rays for the first time, they're like, man, it looks like a soap opera. Like, it's almost fake looking. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see how it looks because it's one of the first movies they ever shot with 48 frames per second. So I'm interested to see where these new uh, 4K TVs go. They're supposed to be the next step above 1080p is these uh, 4K TVs. And I, I've seen one on, one on display uh, since, since since they started making them. And it looks like you could just like reach into the TV and just grab stuff out of it. It's, it's pretty crazy. crazy. But yeah, Hobbit was amazing. Check it out. Awesome. I think Solly will love you. you got to take him. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely definitely want to see it. I just don't know if I'm going to see it in theaters or wait till it just comes out on video or what. Yeah. And it's long, too. It's a long time to be sitting in the theater. I'm sure when it comes out on DVD, they'll have the extended It'll probably version. be three and a half hours. Yeah. yeah for yeah. sure. 45 minutes of deleted footage. All right. So, arcade games. Where are we at? Uh, basically done with Minecraft. I'm just waiting for the, the new update for that so we can finally get the Ender Dragon and all that good stuff. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, and then I guess next on the list, um, rolling with arcade games here, checked out that Happy Wars, um, played it for a while. Uh, for a free-to-play the... game, it's pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Um, I only played one class so far. I mean, I did all the tutorials for all the classes, but I only right, actually right. have been playing the caster class. But uh, I really like the game so far. I downloaded the tile update for it recently. Um, Since Xbox Live was nice enough to send us a message letting us know about that. For sure. Hey, <laughs> new update. But uh, yeah, it's really nice, man. I really like that game. I have to play it some more for sure. I haven't devoted enough time to that one. I think you know? so I think Steve has spent like a good 30 or $40 in, in app purchases on that game. Oh, for Happy Wars, yeah? Yeah. Nice. I, uh, I haven't spent any money on it, but I have played a, a, de a decent bit. It's, it's, it's a fun game. Yeah, I like it. I, I Honestly, and I hope it trends. I hope that they start making more free-to-play games like that. You well, know? they've got at least two more in the works that I know about. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, one of them is supposed to be like an RTS or strategy type of game. That's uh, the one from E3 this past year. It's like oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Old yeah. Gods or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, that one, and then... Um, another one that's actually a pretty big one i can't think of it right now uh you know what uh, what arcade game i'm looking forward to though that's actually it's finally getting close to being finished is battle block theater yes that's gonna be awesome i'm definitely looking forward to that one i know the big one i was always looking forward to i was telling you about earlier was fez and i was actually a little let down on that one yeah um it was what castle crashers you had like how many different nights to choose from well battle block theater is supposedly gonna have over 200 yeah, different characters to choose from oh uh, yeah uh, that's insane and like the uh the number of levels are just gonna be as i think this uh, hundreds of levels and then plus uh i could be wrong but i think i heard something about like like, like there might be like a level editor in the game to where you can even like people can make their own levels nice It'd be awesome if you could make your own levels and have other people play them, too. Yeah, people like, make your friends list, yeah. invite them in, check out my map. Right. But yeah, I'm waiting for that one for sure. I still have been waiting for news on uh, that Joe and Mac remake that they were talking about years ago. I follow that guy's blog, but he's working on another game right now. Well, uh, Oddworld is finally going to be making its way to 360 soon. Nice. Yeah. Do, uh, is, are all of them or just the original? I know uh, Stranger's Wrath is coming. And I think uh, Munch's Odyssey will be coming out as well. Nice. That was the one I actually liked the best. Munch's Odyssey? The first one was actually kind of hard. Yeah. I liked Stranger's Wrath the, uh, the best because it, it it was the darkest out of, out of all of them. Yeah. But they were all good games. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. The first one, I don't know why. It just seemed kind of hard. I don't know. Yeah. But after that, they definitely got better, I think. That's for sure. And then, all right. So, one last arcade game. I, uh downloaded the sonic adventure 2 and funny i i thought i had played that one before because i remember the old dreamcast days and i remember sonic adventure i beat that game and went through the whole thing and i swore i had played sonic adventure 2 before but when i loaded it up i none of it seemed familiar to me at all really um i was actually I went, you didn't remember that first level running through the streets I, that's all i remember though like, I feel like maybe I just saw it, or maybe I didn't play the game enough, or I don't even know, because nothing else from the game felt maybe, familiar to Maybe me. you had it and just played it a little bit and then never finished it or Yeah, because I know I, I beat the first one for sure. What I'm mad about is that they're charging us an extra 400 points to get the battle mode that was yeah. included in the GameCube edition of the game. Yeah, I paid for it too. Um, 
Yeah. I noticed that there was something weird. I played around with the little chow garden a little bit in the new game, and it seemed like it was a little glitchy at first, but I must have been doing something wrong because I finally got to do what I wanted. Did you ever play uh, Sonic Generations? Nope, still haven't played that one yet. That's a great and game. You know I'm the Sonic guy, man. So I'm I'm failing right now. There's like at least three Sonic games. That have the come two out. greatest Sonic games you haven't played yet: so- Sonic All Stars Racing and Sonic Generations. Yep, I've got Sonic Generations on my wish list right now, so I'm hoping to pick that one. That up. game's awesome. And it's like, on sale, from what I know. If you like the old Sonics, or if you like Sonic Four Episode One and Two, like you, you you'll love Generations and like. Each level, there's the old classic side-scrolling version of the level, and then there's 3D version of the level. And even even the uh, 3D levels are really well done. Like uh, unlike some of the past Sonic games, like Sonic Unleashed and yeah. games like that. I, th- th- those are the games that started to give Sonic a bad name for a little while. Yeah. But rest assured, Sonic is back on top, and he's back on his game again. Because well, I got plenty of games on my wish list right now, and I got. A- quite a bit of money for Christmas, so I'm hoping that as soon as I get back to Chicago, I'll be hitting up Amazon and picking all them deals. So you raced a race on the, the Sonic All-Stars racing? Uh, I will be picking that what one. What did you think sure. of that? No, I loved it. Um, I like how the cars just transform as the level changed. The one I was on was just a race with the car, but I saw you playing a little bit yeah. uh, before we got started, and it seems really awesome. I actually like it better than the most recent Mario Kart that I played on, on Wii. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think it's a lot better than that. Yeah. They've taken it, you know, in a whole new, a whole new direction, because, you know, if, traditionally you've had the uh, the kart racers, and then, like, you had the flying racers, like Diddy Kong Racing was when they were flying in the planes right. or whatever, and then, then they've had the boat racers, like, Wave Race and stuff. I like that. all about Diddy Kong. And so they've, like, taken the best of all those type of racing and games and just them all into put, one. A, put them together in one yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. And it's got all the, all the Sonic characters, all the Sega characters you could think of. Like, they've even got Shinmu, like... Oh yeah, okay. everyone's there. Nice. Knights from Knights into Dreams is there. Uh, Panzer Dragoon, they're, they're all there. Speaking of Shinmu, I don't know why I thought I heard that they were making a new one. Did I make that up? They're the creator guy who did it. He, he he's been talking about it. He's just I thought uh, so, but nothing's been written. Just rumors stone. Yeah, at he, this point. Yeah, thought so. That'd still be awesome though, because Shinmu was nice. Yeah, it was like one of the first real awesome open world games. Yeah. So that about wraps it up for Arcade. I got a couple flashbacks. Uh, P actually picked me up a copy of Singularity because I'd never played it before, and I say I probably played about halfway through so far. Yeah. And I love it, man. It. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. It reminds me a lot of Bioshock. I like the weapons being able to age people and stuff. Yeah. The uh, the seeker gun is hot. I was playing around with the the rail gun or the spike gun. Oh, we can nail people to the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome gun too. But I was messing around with the sniper. I pretty much play with every single gun for a while until I get the achievement for the kills for it or whatever. I, I think there was an achievement for like spear and like two or three people at once with one spear. Did you that get was, that one? Uh, that's one of the ones I'm having trouble with. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple achievements that seem like they would be real easy. You just gotta. It's hard. It's hard to get them to line up. <laughs> yeah. You know, just right to get that achievement. But yeah, no, I really like that one too. Um, I'm trying to think, there was something about that game I wanted to mention. And now I can't remember. I like the whole setup of it though, like in the the way that it reminds me, like we were talking about it too, how Bioshock's got the the Eve and stuff, and how in this one you've got your E ninety nine, yeah, the E ninety nine, and just been on your upgrades weapons and stuff. Of course, you know me, I'm always upgrading the shoddy first. So I love my shotgun. Oh yeah, and I want to get. Uh, I'm pretty sure I already got the achievement for fully upgrading that one. Yeah. So. I think there's an achievement for fully upgrading all the weapons, but it's hard. I don't even know if I'm going to have that much E99. It's hard to do on one playthrough. I don't even think I did. Because you'd really have to be looking for all. Two playthroughs, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you'd have to be spending a lot of time looking for every bit of E99. The multiplayer on that game is actually really good, too. I I noticed for that one specifically, there are a lot of multiplayer achievements for that game. Yeah. Like, a lot. And I haven't even loaded up the multiplayer yet. It's fun. So, I'm kind of curious. Are, I want, have you loaded it up at all recently? I wonder if the servers are still pretty heavy. Are there still enough people playing? Yeah, there's there's still people on there playing. Like, I'll have to down. load that up when I get there, because there's at least a dozen multiplayer achievements. I'm like, man, I'm never going to get these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, uh, you can definitely get them. That's, so, yeah, I'll be loading that one up for sure. Uh, but yeah, Singularity is awesome, and thank you again for that. No problem. You're awesome, welcome, sir. Awesome. Uh, finally, be Alan Wake, and I know uh, P's been happy about that. The Wake to Meister, Big Al. That game was amazing. I don't know why I slept on it for so long. 
Um, and really, I had it. I just would only play like a couple chapters at a time. Yeah. But I uh, finally sat down and polished it off and even got started on the first DLC for it. Yeah. Um, loving it. And I'll eventually polish off the last DLC for it and finally get American Nightmare. American Nightmare is awesome, too. I don't know why I'm sleeping on Alan Wake so hard, because it is awesome. Yeah, and Probably then one, um, of the, one of the better games. Anyway. American Nightmare has the uh, Fight Till Dawn mode, which is like Horde mode, Alan Wake style. It's really nice. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. So what all? What's? I mean, I know that we we had talked about it before, but from going from Alan Wake to American Nightmare, like going from a retail version of Alan Wake to like an arcade, you're saying it's basically like the same size. It, it, it plays like. it play, plays just like the retail game. Nice. Yeah, it's like it's like Alan Wake, but uh, with a. A new story and new location and more guns. Like, like that doesn't say new weapons and stuff. Yeah, because yeah, like like an American Nightmare, he's got uh, the nail gun because yep. uh, w- w- one of the levels that you go to is like a farm or whatever, and that's where you get the nail gun. Nice. And uh, it's it fi- it fires faster than the freaking uh, Uzi does, but it's not as powerful as the Uzi, so they're they're, they're kind of balanced out. I was always laughing at Barry. He was always cracking me up throughout that game. The way that uh, American Nightmare starts out is uh, Barry's in his hotel room laying on the bed, and an episode of Night Springs comes onto the TV, and I guess he's having a dream or whatever, and then um, th- then it goes like to, it's it's crazy. It, it's always hard to explain the story of Alan Wake because the story of Alan Wake is just all over the place. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's funny because on my playthrough, like I was kind of taking my time and trying to find everything. I found all the little can towers. I found all the radio shows. I missed one of the t- television uh, shows, the Night Springs television shows. I missed one. I think I did, too. I, I don't know I where I missed it, it but I totally missed one. Um, and when I loaded up the next one, the DLC, I, I found all the paper cutouts um, I found most of the games. I, I'm not quite done with it yet, so I think I still got like at least one or two more games to find. Now, uh, I can't remember if it was episode one or two when you like go like in underground and there's like these furnaces, and if you shine the light on the furnace, it'll yes. shoot the fire out. I, I spent 20 minutes down there turning all them furnaces. Yeah, so off. you get that achievement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's crazy because the the darkness dudes like they just keep popping up down there, and yeah. you got to use and the furnaces. Gotta, and it takes a while because that little basement or whatever you're in is huge. There's furnaces everywhere. Yeah, yeah. The, like, the, I mean, like you said, there's over twenty of them down yeah. there. Yeah, but yeah, no, I really like that one. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to playing American Nightmare. I've got plenty of points for Christmas. So I'm gonna get home and get my arcade on. Yeah, but download plenty. Um, let's see here. I guess that's... You got any, uh, arcade games on your hit list that you're already thinking about downloading? The only... I've got definitely American Nightmare right now. There was a... I want to say there was at least one other one that I've got on my list right now. One of the newer ones that I want to pick up. But I can't remember what it's called. Uh, um... You should try out Dust and... Uh, it's called Dust and Elijah Taylor or something like that. That one's on my list. That's a really good game. Isn't there a new one called, um... It's like an action Gods RPG. Of something rather, or... Um, oh, uh, the Lord of the Rings, Guardians of Middle Earth. Yeah, how is that? D- Jerry said it's awesome. I haven't played it. I haven't either. It's on my list though. I my list of arcade games is out of control. <laughs> uh, Jerry said that it's a MOBA, a massive online battle arena game, or so- something like that. I forget what he said. MOBA stands mm-hmm. for. I, I, I've never played a MOBA, but but check that one out. There's also, there's also a, a season pass for that game. Which really? Is, yeah, is it, yeah I, I think it's the first arcade game to have a season pass. I guess they have plenty of DLC planned for it then. Yep. That's awesome, at least. Maybe they'll, maybe that'll start trending. We'll yeah. start actually seeing arcade games that are you know big enough that they'll be able to do stuff like that. I mean, or who knows, you know, in the future that might be like the way of uh, retail games where you just, you know, you buy like the main frame of the game as your arcade as your arcade game for 20 bucks and then you buy all the fleshed out extra stuff that they would have put in a retail game kind of like microtransactions but not really yeah it's not like you're buying a shirt yeah you're buying like a whole you know chunk or like a whole storyline or something you know yeah but definitely awesome though yeah so moving right along i think that covers the flashbacks there um darksiders 2 oh man so I think I have all of the armor sets now, basically. The only one I didn't get was the promo one that they did for like a week. You had to log on between X date and X date, and they would send it to you. For, I completely right. forgot to log in during that. I had already beat the game. So I was like, do I really need this armor set? You know? Plus all those weapons, you can buy them now for like exactly. 80 points a piece or and something. And I didn't. I mean, like I got the ones that were worth it. Yeah. But 
for the most part, I picked up. Most of those weapons sense. aren't even any good after level five or yeah, six well, anyway. They're just level five. I think there was only maybe one that was a level ten item. Yeah. Um, I really liked the the possessed items in this game. I really, really loved feeding axes and stuff. Like, yeah, I got this badass axe. I'm gonna feed it a couple items. I really liked that addition. Yeah, should I remember? One. I had uh, I had crafted you a pretty sweet item and sent the it to you. Glass death. Yeah. <laughs> I still have that item too. Hell yeah, man. Um, yeah, the game, the controls for this game were so much better. And what's funny is uh, I never actually beat the first Dark Siders game. I got all the way to the end, and right when you had to go collect all the seven uh, sword shards or what have you, yeah, I collected like two and then put the game down because I had to run run back over the whole world. Um, yeah, and then you look on your map, you see where all them shards are, and you're like, oh, no. Yeah, I'll come back to that later. No, but no, I mind. polished Darksiders 2 off with the quickness. That there was not a the game was awesome. Night. Yeah, there was not a point in that game where I was bored, or where I felt like I needed to take a break, or where I was like, oh, I gotta go run back through the whole world. I really know? like how they added the uh, looting system to that game. Me too. I like a lot of the stuff. I like that the, they added a mailbox and stuff like that, so yeah. that you could send items to other people on your friends list. Yeah. Um, the controls were so much better this time around. The, so much better. Death is a lot faster and more agile than war. Like definitely, and I like dude, how you got dude your straight horse. scaling walls, jumping. He's yes. almost like in like from, like like from Assassin's Creed or something like definitely like a Prince of Persia type of deal. The way he'd be platforming. I liked how they gave you your horse right off the bat this time too. You seemed to yeah. worry about you know yeah walking around for a couple hours first. Yeah, because it was a while before you got the horse in the first Dark Side. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a good. It was, it was a good minute. around forever. Like yeah. the only thing you could do, like in this one, at least you can like bump her around to like move quickly. Yeah, but you got to do it like twice and walk a few steps because that third one slows yeah, you that down. That third roll is a slow one. Yeah, man. Especially if you're fighting bosses. It's, oh, um, I actually did. I had two glitches in Dark Siders two. Um, I had a boss glitch that pissed me off. Which um, one? I can't remember which boss it is right now, but I swear I. Got I told you about the boss the uh, the that I was glitching on right where the whole where like the boss himself would freeze, but e everything else around him. That's what it was the same boss, and what I had to the do, wailing host that was his name. Yes, and what I had to do, I had to beat him without using any magic. Same thing I had to do, yeah, because I guess it was too much some part particle effects on exactly, the screen. Exactly, something I was doing would freeze him up, and what's even funnier is that he would freeze in place, and I was like, well, hmm. He's still got a health bar, and I can still hit him. Yeah. Let me see if I can take him down to zero. I did the same closed. thing. Man. So I took him down to zero, and he's just still frozen there, looking at me like, "Hey, why what's isn't up? he falling?" <laughs> so I had to reload that, but that was the I hit the same glitch on that one. Then I had another boss fight. It wasn't really a glitch; it was just annoying. The sound was completely gone. Oh, that it was, to me it was a boss battle that was completely silent. I'm talking no sound effects, no background music. I think that actually happened to me a couple times where the sound cut out, and you have to like completely exit out of the game and, and then, restart yep, it. And that's exactly well. I I was kind of mad because I wanted to hear the sound effects for the boss, but I went ahead and beat him. Then you know saved and everything and loaded it back up. Then it was fine. Yeah. But it was just funny that I had a completely silent battle, like no sound effects, no background music, no grunts, no sword sound effects, no nothing. Just completely silent. It was weird. Straight ninja. But yeah, those are the only. Other than that, those are the only two like kind of bugs I really ran into in that one. I was pretty pleased with that game. Yeah. Um, yeah so that was a really nice game. A lot of really nice weapons and stuff. Um, All the bosses were pretty epic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, and what's even cool about that is there was a lot of side bosses, too, in this yeah, one. Yeah, there was a lot of, went and fought lots, of, of lots of side dungeons. There was way more stuff to explore than there was in the first Dark oh, yeah. Siders. Um, I liked how the the vendors were a little bit different this time around. Yep. Um, they still had uh, Mulgrim or whatever his name was yeah. from the first one, but you only it went to him for, for him. like, yeah. For, like, uh, was it shard upgrades? or what? Did he, I forget what he had now. He had uh, the mystery boxes, right? And he had something else. Yeah, but yeah, he he didn't sell much, and I I think you could only find him in like one spot in each in each world. Yep. Um, traveling was a lot better. I liked that you didn't have to worry about going fast through the, traveling. Yes. yes, the fast travel was amazing, and the the other thing I really liked about the fast travel in this game. Um, 
Was Not, if you were in the middle of a dungeon and you needed to travel out to get potions or something, yep. it would put that little yellow marker on the map and it would port you right back into where you were in the dungeon. Yep. So it, you wouldn't have to go in to the, the first dark side. You had to walk all the way to a freaking serpent hole and yep. then take the serpent hole to where you wanted to go and then and walk. And then to when where you got you back to the dungeon, you had to start at the very beginning. Yeah, it was a pain in the ass. But I think the reason they did it with this one because there were so many puzzles in this game that by the time you would get to the end of the dungeon, if you started at the beginning, you couldn't even get back to where you were yeah so i kind of think that's why they did it too and it just fast travels where it's at anyway yeah all games are doing that now exactly it's where it's at um yeah i was very pleased with that one i'm definitely excited to see where they take the rest of them for sure yeah i mean very polished like very few bugs as far as i'm concerned it wasn't game they weren't game ending bugs or glitches you know so it wasn't anything um too terrible um so yeah i guess that pretty much wraps up darksiders which brings us right along to uh resident evil 6 which unfortunately i still haven't polished off yet i've only played two of the campaigns so far i noticed that the uh the title update recently made ada's chapter playable whenever and also made it co-op yep so when i get back home i'm actually gonna have you load it up with me so we can polish off the rest of them oh yeah um i know we've been playing the uh the mercenaries maps and yeah. i'm glad that they finally added all the rest of the maps on the marketplace or um because we only had what one map for like the first few weeks we had the game yeah the the only one map that came unlocked in the game the other two are locked and then hopefully once we finish beating you'll have those two I'll maps the other two yeah and then plus uh, the pre-order maps, depending on where you got it. And then you had got the one map, the catacombs. So we had the one map and the catacombs. So we had two maps. Two maps, and that was it. For the longest time. Yep. And then finally, so now finally like they least, released the other ones. Yeah, so now uh, we've got five. And I, well, you've got more than I do. Plus the map pack. The with the map, yeah. Yep. So it's what? Uh, so what's your least favorite map? Three pre-order bonuses plus the two in the map. That's five plus three again. So I think eight maps altogether. That sounds right. Yeah. I think my least favorite one is Catacombs. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I don't know why I don't like that map. And well, it wasn't really my favorite either. I don't um, know why. The High Seas Fortress was pretty cool. I actually liked the first map, the the main map that we played. Forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that seems to be the uh, seems like probably the the one that we're gonna want to stick with to try and get the best scores on the because score, yeah, best ranks, yeah, that seems like that's the easiest map to do that. On. Although uh, that map uh, where we were on the ship, I think that was that was the high seas fortress. The other one seemed that like was it would a good map good too. The lava one, the fire. Yeah, that um, that one was what really was that good. One called uh, fire water, liquid, liquid, liquid fire. fire yeah, it. liquid fire. Come on, fire water. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, those new maps are sweet. Um, I don't know if you, Requiem for have you War, that up, one was crazy. Uh, ResidentEvil.net at all recently? I don't know if I got. I logged uh, on like a week and a half ago. I, I need to log on again and see if I've racked up any points in the meantime. It'll give you some points just for logging in. Oh, yeah. I think you get a thousand just for logging in. You can sit there and sign out and log in and sign out and log in. You'll get a thousand points. Plus, you've played the time. game since last time you logged so in. So I'll get more points yeah. as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you might even get I like haven't 20, done 30, any 000. of the weekly challenges that they have been doing for that game at all. I haven't, I haven't either. To, no. Yeah, I haven't tried a single one of them. I hardly ever do weekly challenges on games unless I'm already playing it. Yeah, exactly. Or unless it's like a really awesome challenge. You're just like, I don't really want to do that. Yeah, well, like, uh, and in uh, Mass Effect 3, they had challenges. And, and, and if you completed these challenges, uh, it would unlock weapons for you in the game. So it kind of gave you an incentive to right. do the challenges. Yeah, this one I think is just for point totals yeah. for Resident Evil on that, which you can then spend on costumes or what yeah. have you new upgrades all i really want to spend the points on is costumes there's yes. nothing really that appealing I you know uh the, the other stuff they had listed on there was really nothing it was just little crap you could play around with on their website i think yeah nothing really that important yeah so resident evil 6 i you know the only thing the, my only gripe about resident evil 6 and it's not even really a gripe it's just different um the fact that they added like action sequences and stuff into it it's something that you're not used to when you play a resident evil game because it's definitely new yeah and um, i think they kind of overdid it like there was a lot, there, there was a few too many quick time events i agree i feel like if they had just kept it at a couple or just toned it down a bit that's fine but it seemed like there were too many times where like oh button press is wrong died yeah start all over um, they need to bring Resident Evil back to its roots and make a sequel to Code Veronica. I agree. And that would I agree. Good. I'm re- I'm really happy that they made it so you can like shoot and be moving at the same time and like reloading and moving. Like they didn't make it so that 
you know, you have to always be standing and pivoting with one foot or what have you. Yeah. Um, I did like how you could dive to the ground now and stuff like that now. They did add a lot of really cool things to the franchise, I but want, they changed a few I things. I want the next kinda... Resident Evil to have Claire as the main character again. I think she's, yeah. she's probably my favorite character. Yeah. Yeah, Claire's pretty cool. Veronica awesome. was the shiz. Yeah, Code Veronica was one of my favorites for sure, and I've got that one on arcade right now. Yeah, yeah, the the HD Code Veronica X HD. I know it. And, uh, did you get a uh, Resident Evil Four? Also, they got that one on there. No, I didn't pick up that one. Um, I actually I have, downloaded it. I have, but Res I haven't played it. I have Resident Evil Four on the Wii, so I wasn't. Sure I had I bought it on it. the Wii and then never played it, and then now I've downloaded it on Xbox and still haven't played it. Yeah, I'll probably end up picking it up because it's a lot different playing a shooter on the Wii than it is on oh, Xbox. Yeah. So I mean, oh, yeah. um, and plus it's HD, so yeah. I mean that's you know always good to have upgrades and stuff like that. And I noticed too, if you have got the uh, the collector's edition for six, that you could get those two for free. The Code Veronica, which reminds and, me. Uh, they just came out Resident with a, uh, a Resident Evil for the 3DS, uh, Resident Evil Revelations. Yes. I played the demo for it, actually. Well, um, they are we're going to release that on consoles. It's gonna, I think it's going to be an arcade game. Yeah. What? What, are they yeah. going to, like, revamp it or do, like, some HD graphics or something? Probably, yeah. Nice, nice. So, and, and from, from, from what I hear, that's probably the best Resident Evil game in a long time. Yeah, I just played the demo, so I can't really say much about it. So, But, I mean, from what I played, it seemed really awesome. Nice. I'll definitely be interested to check it out. Yeah. I don't bust out my DS very often, usually when I'm traveling. <laughs> Especially, you know, since we got awesome phones these days. I mean, exactly. no real need for a handheld game system yeah. anymore. Every once in a while, i got to pick up that new Mario game, but beyond that, you know. Yeah, or if there's a I Zelda. I didn't buy the Wii U. I'm terrible. Like, I, I want one, but I don't think I'm going to get it till Zelda comes out. Yeah. Um, there's nothing really well, that exciting. Rest about assured, it. there will be a Zelda coming. The question is when. Exactly. And then that brings us right to Dishonored, which I'm going to have to say I didn't pick up Halo 4 this year and I didn't pick up Black Ops 2, so I, just, I know I suck. But I'm going to go ahead and say Dishonored was probably my favorite game of the year. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I think the only problem with that game is that it was too short. Well, see, and I feel like, I don't know if maybe, like, because I know you said that you did a lot of the side quests. I did all, and, all and of everything. them. Maybe I just explore too slow or something, because I swear I put at least 24 hours into that game. Yeah, uh, I think for me it was like maybe twelve hours. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, because I played it for almost twenty four hours straight. Like I didn't even get away from my. Because yeah, I was chugging I, red. I did all man. the side quests, got all the achievements for doing all the side quests. And oh everything, yeah. So. There's actually one achievement that glitched out for me, and I was mad. Really? You know Which the one? one part of the game where um, there's the art dealer's house, and you gotta get into the safe or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's an achievement for opening the safe yourself by not giving him the code for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally opened it myself and didn't get the achievement. I was wondering why you uh, why you didn't do that because I was comparing our I achievements. I was mad. I totally, and I think this is why. Could you load up an old I, save and do it again? I think that it, I something happened and I did it out of order. Um, uh, the guy was asking for the key and I went and did some other stuff first, then went back and got the key from the person or got the code from the person and then went and did it. So I don't know if maybe because I did it out of order that it glitched out, but I definitely opened the safe myself and didn't get the achievement. I was pretty mad about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was the only thing I ran across in that game that gave me any problems at all. Um, I thought that they could have tamed down that crazy voice when you got the items out. It's all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. crazy whispers and voices going on. Um, probably, I know that this is going to be one of their new IPs. I would venture to say that they could probably get rid of the bone charms. Um, you think so? They're, some of them are very beneficial, but some of them are really pointless. I think the other upgrades, the runes, keep those for sure. Those are awesome. But the bone charms were just kind of eh, an extra thing to find and maybe help you along the way. But there, they weren't really that. They had a amazing. couple good ones. There were, yeah, there were a couple good ones. But for the most part, they weren't like overly amazing. You know, yeah. most of them were just like a little health bonus from eating stuff or a little, you know. So I mean, the bone charms were great, but it was just one extra thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
maybe in the next game, instead of having runes and bone charms, just make it one thing. I like or, how the characters' you know, opinions uh, change about you based on how you play. Definitely. Like, I was really pissed off when I got to that last mission, and the dude was like, I don't like what you've become, and, like, started to pull out a gun. It's like, hey, what are you doing? I had to kill that dude. You're about to shoot a flare and alert the bad guy. What's wrong with you? It's funny, because in playing that game, like, I don't think I realized the first time around, because that game has so much replayability. Yeah, a ton, and I definitely want to play it again, um, at least twice more. In fact, because I want to do a pacifist run, and then I want that's to going to be the hardest one. Definitely, I in fact I did load it up again and went through the first two levels to try and see if I could even do it, and I did. But it's hard. You will you will definitely want to save frequently. Yeah, like every few seconds. Definitely, okay. if you make it past a few mobs, save. Yeah, because if you don't, you're gonna to have to start it all over again. You're gonna be mad. Yeah. Um. But uh, I definitely want to play through that one a couple more times. I really like just how there's so many decisions in this game. Like you could, you could take everyone down non non violently, non lethally, or you could kill everyone. Like there's actually people in the game where like I was mad because I was assassinating everyone. Yeah, I was not taking anyone down non violently. Take no prisoners. I was killing everyone. Yeah, right? me too. I didn't realize there's actually a few players in the game, a few NPCs in the game, that if you don't kill them fast enough, they'll kill themselves, or somebody else will kill them. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had a couple where it was like, target neutralized, and I'm like, no! I wanted to say target assassinated! <laughs> so I'm, I definitely want to go back and play, because there was at least two achievements that I missed. There's one achievement for letting a dude go. And yeah. there's another achievement for killing a well, dude see, that that's I what I did. When I went through, I would look at the achievements, and so I would save before you make like certain decisions. That so way, if you messed so that up I, or whatever. So that I could you know, do it this way, get the achievement, load up the save, and, and then, then do it do the it way you want to do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, like, sometimes the, the, uh, there would be a decision, and then there's two achievements. There's an achievement for doing it this way, and there's an achievement for doing it the other way. Yep. And you want to get both of the achievements, so you're going to want to keep those saves. Exactly. Funny story, uh, my boy Matt picked up that game. He was playing it on PC. When I'm talking, he killed everybody. He killed everybody. He was killing quest givers. Like, you know the, the guy who builds the upgrades for you? Right. He killed that guy. Oh, yeah? So he didn't get no upgrades. <laughs> His version of the game, he couldn't get any upgrades. He didn't have nobody to turn blueprints into. Damn. So, yeah, he was killing everyone. I'm surprised. And I didn't even know it was uh, like that. I didn't even know you could do that. I'm surprised that they, 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 they didn't make uh, NPCs like that, you know, invulnerable. Right. But, hey, I guess if you didn't want any upgrades, I don't even know if he knew that that guy could give you upgrades. He just killed him. Because I know uh, in games like Oblivion and Fallout and Mass Effect and, and stuff like that, there's, there's NPCs that you need. And, like, you can kill them, but they'll, like slowly get back up and you know and they'll come back to life like so they're like this looks like you didn't really kill them yeah i was very very pleased with that game um i don't even know who i love the tall boys i don't know why they were so cool man yeah that achievement for like stabbing one yeah that was hard man it took me a couple tries i actually had to watch a youtube video to figure out how to get that achievement and you i had to like do like a jump and like the move where it like dashes and then the way I did it was you used your blink move to grab him. Yeah. And then once you're up there, you can stab him. Yeah. And that was the only way I could do that one. I, yeah. I tried for like 30 minutes to stab one of those guys, and I just couldn't do it, man. I'm sitting there swiping at his legs and yeah, doing everything I could do. It took do. me a, a couple tries as well. What, the other thing about that game, just going back to decisions, 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 there was the one, you know how you could do the uh, possession, possessions or what have you? Yeah. Um, there was the part where you had to possess the fish to get into the ball. Well, what's funny about that is I started thinking, I'm like, there's an achievement in the game for only, for not getting any of those magic upgrades, for only getting the original blink that it gives you and then not getting any more. And I was like, well, how is that even possible? Because you need possession to get into the party. But there is a party invite yeah. that I found in the game, and I was like... That's what I got, uh, That's how I got in. And I didn't even think to use it. So yeah. on my next playthrough, that's what I'm going to do so that I don't get any of the upgrades. There's some people talking outside in the front of the party, and one of them drops the invitation. I act, I didn't even... I found an invitation elsewhere. I found it on a desk somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I don't remember where I found it, but I remember finding one and then thinking, what is this for? I got into the party through the river, you yeah. know, or through the moat or whatever. 
So yeah, when I play through it again, I'm not getting any upgrades. I'm gonna stay with just my blink and I'm gonna do a pacifist run and I'm gonna get hundreds of achievement points off of just that run. Um, I noticed a lot of famous voices in there as I was playing through. Did you get the achievement for uh, taking possession of someone and then staying uh, staying in possession of them for at least a minute or something like that? Oh, I think it was three minutes or for the better part of three minutes or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. No, I didn't do that one. Um, in fact, I don't think I ever possessed uh, any humans. I only possessed rats and, I'll and fish. I'll tell you how to get it um, because... what. Uh, when you possess someone, you can't stay in possession of them for as long as you need to get the achievement. The only way to do it is to possess a rat and then go inside one of those rat crawl spaces. And stay in it. Because because once you're inside the crawl space... It like, won't let you pop out of the possession or whatever. Right. Good so call. That's, that, that's, that's the, only, that's the only way then. to do it. I'll go back on my old game and do I just one. possessed a rat, walked into a hole in the wall and just stayed in there and just let it sit there for three but minutes. But yeah, I loved all the stealth and stuff in that game, man. Like, choosing who you want to poison and stuff. That Assassinating one scene those two yes, brothers, yeah. Yes. The, oh man, I killed the one dude with steam down in the steam room. Yeah. That was awesome. And I didn't even know that that was an achievement. I didn't look at it. So, like, I see him in there and I'm like, I wonder if there's another way into this room. And I go around the corner and there's a crank and I'm like, hmm. Yep. So, yeah, I was really, really pleased with that game. And I did kill some people that I probably shouldn't have, but it is what it is. I mean... It's always fun playing the evil character. Exactly. So... And I'm glad that the game sold as well as it did, and it did as well as it did. Because yeah. um, they definitely said they have a new a new IP now. So... It, um, it, it definitely deserves a sequel. Yeah. Oh, I agree completely. Um... Not too much I would really change with the game, honestly. I mean, It'd be nice if they added some sort of a, not a competitive, but a, maybe a co-op uh, mode to it. That would, yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, there's not, like I said, the only thing that maybe I would mix is either the bone charms, or maybe just put one kind of charm, whether it's a mixture of the runes and the bone charm, or just something. I spent plenty of time collecting them all. I mean, don't worry, there was, I think, only one map, or maybe one map that I wasn't able to collect all the items. Um, I had the rune beaten over here, and I just couldn't find it. I couldn't get to it. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Huh. But, uh, yeah, there was only one level, I think, that I, I missed a rune on. Other than that, man, I explored my ass off, and I was looking everywhere for everything in that game, man. Um, the art style was awesome, too. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So it was, it was kind, of, kind of like a, like a steampunkish type of look. Yes. And that's why I love the the tall boys so much because that's what it felt like. You know? Yeah, yeah, I was very pleased with that one. Definitely, probably best new, uh, definitely best new IP of this year. Yeah, and I'll be picking up. I know I was talking about how I didn't pick up Halo Four or uh, Black Ops Two yet, but I definitely will. I wanted to wait till a little closer to Christmas and get so some Christmas uh, money. Out, out of the two, if you're only going to get one, I would say definitely get Halo Four because I've got yeah. both of them. And, and, and the, now they did, they, they're both great. Was games. it only on sale or did the price drop on that one? Because I thought I heard Halo Four had a price drop. Halo Four was on sale for, on Amazon for two days for thirty nine ninety nine. Oh, so it wasn't a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. It was just on sale. Gotcha. Yeah, it was on sale on Amazon for forty bucks for two days. But yeah, other than that, I actually... Uh, it's a great game. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I've i seen videos and stuff for it. Have you done any of the... I guess they're doing challenges on that one, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, have there's, you, have there's, you da there's daily those? challenges, there's weekly challenges, and there's monthly challenges. Have you tried any of them out yet? or? Um, I just play, and I, I end up unlocking different challenges just by playing. Nice. Uh, there's a ton of different multiplayer modes. Uh, the new Forge is really awesome. Uh, they've upgraded the forge a lot because, like, in the old forge, when you were like trying to put items together, like you would spend forever trying to get this one item into just the right spot, and then, like, once you got it into that spot, you're trying to trying to put another item up against it in a certain way, and you'd end up nudging the item. You just spent a half an hour putting it in place and knocking it out of place. Oh man, that was such a pain in the ass. A lot of well, tweaking and trial and error now uh, now you have the ability to lock items in place so, so like you don't nudge them. once you put an item somewhere you can lock it and then it doesn't matter how what you hit it with it's going to stay right the hell there nice. and uh you can set up these uh snap points each item has snap points and pre uh in uh predefined spots for you know where they're made like if you got like hallways 
they've got uh, snap spots so you can you know easily and quickly snap the pieces together and not spend a half an hour you know getting them just right, right. next to each other uh, which makes it a lot faster and also in the old forge if you sat like like if you sat down a hallway and then you wanted to sit down, you know, make the hallway longer and get another piece of hallway. You had to go back into the menus, choose hallway again. Well, now there's item duplicate. So you got the nice. hallway and then you can just duplicate it right there and then boom, snap it and then lock it into place. Good so stuff. It's, it, building is a lot faster and easier. On so from everything now. I've heard, and I know that you were saying the same thing, 343 did an amazing job. Amazing. I mean, uh, they uh, they actually made uh, and, me, and me and Jerry were talking about this recently. They actually make Bungie look kind of bad because they made a better Halo than Bungie ever did. <laughs> kind of funny too, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the multiplayer is more balanced and more fun than uh, than the old ones. Tons more maps this time around. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think uh, ten or so maps out of the box, and then the first map packs out, which adds three. So I think it's thirteen maps right now. Nice. And then. Uh, and that's just for multiplayer. Spartan Ops has its own maps, its own missions. And uh, like I said, uh, they come out with a new episode each week. Uh, the first season just ended, and the second season will be starting up in January. But uh, it's five episodes per season and uh, five chapters per episode. So even jumping in late, like it wouldn't be that serious, you know? No, no, no. And uh, as soon as you as soon as you logged in, it would automatically, you know, uh, download all five of the episodes uh, that nice. that, that you would missed. And like, you, they're all free. You could play right through them. Uh, yeah, the last, I, honestly, the last Halo I played was Reach. I didn't even play the the remake of one. Oh, anniversary. The anniversary. Uh, I got it, and I played through the first few levels, but I just never ended up finishing it. Yeah. Too too many of the I games came yeah, out right around the same time. Exactly. Because it, it came out, it came out like holiday season last year, and like holiday season last year was like, you know, a lot a lot of awesome games. So right. That that might have been better for like a summer release or something. Then I probably would have had more time for it. Yeah. I'm, I, I should have plenty of time once I get back home, so I've got a couple games I want to polish off um, and plenty of arcade games. The campaign play. is epic. Uh, they put a much bigger emphasis on the story this time. How like, long was the campaign? Pretty uh, decent? Or? I'd say about as long as the Gears campaign, about 10 hours. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're playing it on Legendary, it'll take you longer. For sure. Did, um, you, did you already beat it on Legendary? Uh, I play... Uh, the first the, my, my first playthrough was co-op with... I think Steve-O and uh, one of the podcast fans, Death From Above, and uh, we played it on Heroic. And then, after we beat it, uh, I noticed there was an achievement uh, for beating the game on Legendary, and there was also a, an achievement for beating the game on Legendary Solo. Oh. So I, I just went through and I, I played the whole game on Legendary Solo. It took me a while, but, but I did it and got both of those achievements at the same time. Nice. And one of them's like 70G, and one of them's like 90G, so you'll get a, a pretty big gamer score for beating it solo on Legendary. Um, also, beating it on, uh, if you beat the game on Legendary, it unlocks Master Chief's armor that you can use, nice. it, you can use it in multiplayer. Nice. So you can be dressed up as the Chief in multiplayer. So still want. very customizable with armors and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know how like in Call of Duty, they've got the loadouts where you can choose you know, what gun you want to start with and uh, different uh, what perks you want to use. Uh, they've got custom loadouts on Halo now, so you can choose, you know... Uh, you, you can choose your own starting weapons and you can choose different little perks like extra ammo or nice. uh, faster charging uh, shields and things like that. Good stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely be picking that one up. I think retail wise, I'll grab Halo 4 first, polish it off, and then I'll probably pick up Black Ops 2 finally. The star of Black Ops 2 is definitely the new zombie mode because uh, the new a lot, zombie mode. a lot better. It's like a, it's an open world on this one. And uh, you can go anywhere in the whole world you want. And um, there's actually a bus that'll 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 take you from location to location if nice. you go, if you don't feel like walking, because uh, be between each location is like this fog. And if you go into the fog, like these little gremlin zombies will jump on your face and be clawing at your face, and you got to knife them off. And uh, they're really annoying, so it's best to take the bus. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> and a shit ton of Easter eggs. Uh, like, I haven't even found... I've, I've only found maybe a fraction of them, and I've found a lot. Nice. Oh, and also, uh, they added an easy difficulty setting now. Oh, yeah. So you can actually play the game by yourself. 
because uh, I know in, in the first Black Ops, you know, zombies is always fun, but there was really no point in playing it unless you had a full party of four people because you weren't going to last long at all. Right. Well, they, they've added so you can put it on easy difficulty So they still have, like, fortifications and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, uh, on this one, with fortifications, if you rebuild the same fortification 20 times, then... Uh, the boards will change from wood to steel. And, nice, and, so they're upgradable as well. Yep, and it'll, nice. it'll take the zombies longer to, to take them down. So Good stuff. That's pretty cool as well. Yeah. And uh, the bus that takes you around, you can find different upgrades for the bus. Nice. Like there's a, there's this big metal thing that you can put on the front of the bus that, that lets the bus like mow the zombies over when you're going down the nice. road. Uh, there's another one that's like a turret that you can put on there. Uh, there's a, a ladder that you can put on the back to let you climb up to the top of the bus. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I got a lot of games ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> that is for show. So, I picked up the Doom 3 BFG edition, and what's funny is it sat on my de- it sat on my desk for like three or four weeks before I finally took it out of the plastic. Um, picked it up because it was nice and cheap. I mean, it's only 39 bucks or whatever, 40 bucks. Yeah. And uh, I had been wanting to load it up for a while, but just so busy with other things and... I'll get into that in just a minute, but yeah. uh, I finally loaded it up, and what's funny is I only sat down and played it for about four hours, and I was telling you, in the four hours I played, I didn't get a single achievement, man. I was so mad. Not even a single one. I'm even looking at the easy ones trying to pick That's them crazy. Are, um, are all the achievements on there for Doom 3? Or... Yes, they're all oh, for okay. Doom 3. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad they didn't incorporate one and two in there. I mean, I've already got it as arcade titles. I don't want you to yeah. waste achievement points on stuff I've already done. It, it's nice that they included those two games with the BFG edition, but they don't. They, they don't need to. Incorporate what I think the they should have done, however, is maybe since those two games are already on the arcade, it would have been nice to maybe see a revamped HD version of the original. Oh games. yeah. I mean, come on now. Even if we just skinned them. A lot of the old shooters like that, just putting a, a mod on it or something would have made it look nice and smooth and a little better as well. So I would love to see a HD remake of Doom 1 or Doom 2. I yeah. Mean, those were the games back in the day, you know? Well, hopefully now that uh, Gearbox has Duke Nukem, I hope that they remake Duke Nukem 3D and... and... That would be exciting. Redo the graphics on that. That would be great. That was always one of the fun ones to get on multiplayer on. I remember uh, oh, was yeah. it the stadium. That oh, was yeah. like one of the best maps or one of the the stadium ones to play and on. and there was the one where it was like there was like an alleyway and like a building and you can go inside the building and there was like cabinets and you could open the cabinets and get inside the cabinet yeah. and shut the door. And there was like a refrigerator you could get inside the refrigerator and shut the door and be hiding in there and then like. I think that might have even been like uh, one of the first shooters, to, uh, first shooters to have jetpacks in it. Yep, I think you're right. And the uh, the the trip mines were always fun too. Oh yeah, setting those up and like like in an area and fortifying yourself in there and just sit kicking back with the uh, chain gun, waiting for someone to come around the corner, hit a trip mine, and throw a hollow duke out there or something. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, the, 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 those were the days right there. You know it. Uh, so yeah, I like I said, I only spent about four hours on that one. I don't even know, truthfully, if I ever beat the original Doom Three. Um, I mean, I know I played it, but I don't, I don't know that I ever beat it. So it's cool to have this one because not only does it have the full game and it's all HD, um, you've also got the two add-ons for it, the two expansions. As oh well. yeah, so the, the Lost Missions or whatever yep. it was. So I'll be happy to sit and play through those. But I think they did a great job with the no. game. Can you skip straight to, straight to the the extra missions, or do you have to play through the game I'm to get to them? I'm pretty or? certain they were both selectable right from the beginning. Oh, that's great. Um, don't quote me on that because I really I jumped right into the main campaign. Right. But right. I'm pretty sure they were both selectable right from the beginning, and they both have their own achievements too, which is cool. Oh, that's good. So yeah. Um, did Doom 3 have multiplayer? I don't know. Do, does the BFG edition... Uh, the, the, I kind of feel like they put multiplayer in it, but again, don't quote me on it. I didn't spend enough time with the game to really huh. to really notice, but I kind of feel like they did. I'd be interested to check that out yeah. if they did, because I didn't even know that. Yeah. Did you get? Did you pick that one up? BFG, uh, yeah. I have it sitting on the rack right in there, and I, nice. I, haven't, I haven't loaded it up yeah, yet. Yeah, if, if it has, I'll have to check it out when I get home. If it does, we'll have to load that one up. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, and then also this year, busting on to the PC games now, and of course, other reasons why I haven't been gaming quite as much, but uh, bouncing back to Diablo 3 just for a moment, yep. um, amazing, well worth the wait, seemed a little shorter than I would have liked. Yeah, it um, was. And 
currently I would say that the replayability replayability is kind of low. Um, only because there should have been more bosses. I agree, and not only that, like it was only what four acts. Yeah. Um, I wanted to fight Mephisto and Bale. I like, wanted to, yeah, I wanted. I wanted, to, I wanted to fight all of his brothers, either. but no, he had to absorb them and become the prime evil or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, still really great game. I liked the looting system a lot better this time around. Yeah, um, it's awesome how everyone gets their own loot. Yes, that was... And I think every looting game that comes out from now on should, should be like follow that. that blueprint. Everything should be instanced like that. Yeah. There's no reason why people should have to fight over loot, yeah. you know? Um, and not only that, I mean, sometimes you'll have, like, you're sitting there playing with a warrior, and the warrior gets all the caster items, and you're like, come on, I'm the caster, share. Hell <laughs> like, yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Are you crazy? I'm selling this. But so I would say my main character, Glass, is probably in his 50s right now. The auction house is a nice addition, um, too. Yes, and the real money auction house is real nice. Um, I didn't play around with it. I haven't sold anything for real money or anything, but I have played around with the auction house enough to make some decent money. And I do feel like gold is actually a lot easier to come by in this game than it, it is, was in previous yeah. Diablo games. Um, I'm hoping, like, the last update that they did for it was kind of meh, the, the Paragon or whatever system, whatever it was called. I'm still waiting for It basically for, just allows you to scale mobs, and it's not really that exciting. I'm still waiting for that PvP arena. That's when I plan on joining back up, is when they finally add PvP. And I think that the only reason they haven't is because they're having problems balancing. I mean, yeah. you could have two witch doctors that are the same level, and one is severely overpowered compared to the other one. I think they're just you know, having... It's all based on what equipment that you're wearing. Exactly. So I think that they're maybe just having problems balancing it or getting the right, you know, uh, dynamic of it or something. I don't yeah. know, because I figured it would have been out by now. It should have. Like, like, it's like they were saying that it will... Before the game came out, uh, they were saying that it was supposed to ship with the game. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then close to release, they were like, it's not ready yet, but we'll have it soon after the game comes out. And then, you know, and then you I wonder if maybe they're just kind of holding it. it for the next expansion, maybe. That, that, that could be. If it's taken this long, it might be that they're just going to add it, you know, with the expansion. It's almost like they might as well wait for the expansion. At this point, they should. I mean, yeah. um, I'm hoping that the next expansion will introduce at least two new character classes. Yeah, um, as well as if they only give us bosses. one, that's fine. But I really would like to see the necromancer, or maybe the druid, or some. Considering of the how characters. short the game is, I think the the uh, that the expansion uh, should be just as long as the normal game itself. Or well, I mean, at least add an act or two, you know, or like enough that you want to play it enough. Because I think they realized really quickly that people beat the game and they didn't play it anymore. Yeah, like I felt like the replayability on Diablo also, two was a lot higher. All the locations reminded me of locations from Diablo 2. Like, the desert place reminded me of Luke Golane. Right. I mean, right, I mean, right, right, right do, off the bat. And it's funny, because I kind of felt like you the knew jungle you place were going to go to the jungle. Like the jungle you place. knew you were going to go to the desert. Yep. Like, you kind of knew the settings already. Yeah. Um, I really liked the, the way they portrayed, like, heaven and stuff. I thought it was really cool looking. Yeah, yeah, that was um, cool. But yeah, I felt like it could have been a bit longer. I did play through again, and I think the only thing they really added with the different difficulties was maybe some new challenges. I wouldn't mind uh, returning to the uh, Arcane Sanctuary. Yeah. That was probably my favorite dungeon. From, from Diablo, Diablo 2, 2 yeah. yeah. Arcane Sanctuary was awesome. Well, maybe that's maybe we'll get something similar to that in the expansion, because they're going to have to add it. I still haven't che uh, I still haven't checked out the secret level yet. I've watched a YouTube video of it, but I haven't checked it out I haven't myself. Either. Uh, either. It's not a cow level. But, no, uh, no. Definitely. The, you have to make an item for that one, yeah? Because yeah. I have a shin bone that I was just sitting yeah. in my inventory. Um, I did like a lot of the, like, you can stack potions now. Things are stackable. Oh, yeah, that was I great. I like that pieces of armor don't take up six slots in your inventory stabs don't take up and eight slots you before know. the game came out i was uh i was leery about it but i'm actually kind of glad that you can just cast a town portal whenever you want yes and not have to worry about keeping scrolls for them right yeah i was happy about that too and i'm, and I'm glad that they didn't do it right off the bat i think you had to be like level eight or something before they gave you the town portal yeah um now uh the the way that that the your skills and abilities are set up, uh, the average player would look at them and think, oh, all right, well I can only choose this one from this category and this one from this category. But you can actually go into the options 
and uh, check this checkbox. I forget what it's called. That allows you, and that lets you customize yes. it any way you want. Yes, I think that should have the that checkbox should have already been checked for everybody right out of the box. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, because a lot of people might not even know that exists. Yeah, you know, that's, and that's what I'm saying. And uh, it, it makes the game ten times more funner once you're able to customize it like that. Exactly. And that way you're not having to only have, like you said, you've got your four main spell groups. But at least that way, if you don't like this one, you can choose another one from the other one. Yeah. Because I know as the as the witch doctor, there was one skill tree that was kind of meh. And I'm like, I don't know if I really like this one a lot. Um, so I would I was completely ignoring that tree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I really liked the Witch Doctor. He was actually my main. He's the one who I've got the highest right now. Um, yeah. Uh, the Witch Doctor is definitely my favorite, followed by the Demon Hunter. Which yeah, I thought was that's pretty, my, pretty that's my awesome. next highest one is the Demon Hunter. The um, Demon Hunter characters definitely look the most badass. They're the most badass looking. I like how you can just shoot in a circle and just spin around. and like. Yeah, they're really fast. Yeah, I like the Demon Hunters for sure, but... Very pleased with the game. I still feel like the, like I said, it could have been bigger. Hopefully, the expansion will add a lot and at least more replayability. Because it's, I don't know, it's kind, of, it feels kind of boring to just replay the same acts and the same bosses and the same missions over and over. You know. I hope they finally bring it to consoles sometime soon. They mentioned it. There was mention of it. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was rumors. They were talking about it. So. Yeah. Truthfully speaking, if they released it on Xbox, I would pick it up just to see how Hell it plays. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd I, buy it for Xbox. I would love to check out a game like that on console. That'd be a good way to revitalize it. Like, we'll, like have the expansion come out and then release a console version with the expansion already on there with it. Yes, that would be dope. Well, and it would open it up to a wider a wider group. I mean, that would also help them justify charging sixty dollars for a game that everyone's had on PC for a year or two. Exactly. Well, and, and, and again, it'll open up the game to a whole another group of gamers. I mean, how many gamers out there don't game on PC? You know what yeah, I'm saying? A like, lot. And there's probably plenty of people out there who would love to play Diablo 3, but either they don't have a good enough computer or they just don't want to game on the PC. Yeah. You know? I mean, so that'll be cool. Have you heard about this game called Planet Side 2? I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I might check that out. It's free to play. Uh... And I also want to check out or get back into the uh, the, the Star Wars. Yeah, I played MMO. that the one time they did like the free weekend. Yeah, um, and it seemed really nice. I mean, it was very polished. Um, yeah, now that you can play it for free all the way uh, all the way up to level fifty, I'm like, I, should, I might as well check it out. Yeah, for sure. And sp jumping right into MMOs, uh, I actually uh, didn't really. I was really torn on. The, the World of Warcraft expansion, the new one, Mists of Pandaria, and I wasn't going to play it. I was told, I told myself I've paid enough money for this game in the last five, six years. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then I got an email from Blizzard talking about, hey, come back to Azeroth. Here's a t free 10-day pass to play with your current characters. Right. So normally when they do 10-day free passes, you got to start over like level one, blah, blah, blah. But I was able to actually just reactivate my account for 10 days. Oh, so cool. it was cool. I was able to load up my old characters. And I still wasn't sure if I was going to get into it or not. But I totally made a monk and got him up to like level 30 something. And the new monk class is pretty sweet. Um, I played a DPS. I did a um, melee DPS guy. Um, and got him to like level 30 something. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll get the game. So I got it. And uh, I haven't touched my monk since. Got on glass on my main character. Did you download the digital version of the expansion? No. Um, okay. I totally bought it. Because um, uh, well, uh, Steve was saying that they had a, a regular uh, edition and a collector's edition for the, for the digital. Yes. And it's actually cheaper to go that way if you don't want to get... It comes with all the digital items that you would get getting the collector's edition. I think he said that uh, if you got the collector's edition digital, it came with a, a, a pet and an extra mount. And mount yeah. yeah. And um, then uh, he also said that it came with uh, an item for Diablo, like a banner or something. A banner for Diablo 3. And then something, and then something, for, Starcraft. something for Starcraft 2. It's, yeah. um, I think they're just avatars. I think they're just pictures. I think right. that's usually all they ever do for Starcraft 2. Um, it's just avatar type things. But uh, yeah, I got the collector's edition because I'm. I got the collector's edition for all the previous ones, so I got my shelf with all my collectors, and I don't want to have a little 
standard edition, so I had to do the collectors. So but, uh, since you had waited a while to buy yours, uh, did you have to get it off of eBay or something? Or They're still selling them on Amazon. Huh. And I didn't think that that was the case. You know, it's weird because usually funny, collector's editions don't sell for that long. But what's even funnier about that, and you actually just got me to think about them, um, they're still selling the collector's edition for the previous expansion oh, on really? Amazon. And I don't know if that means that they made too damn many of them and people weren't buying them, or if they're just trying to make that money. Um, the cool thing was is it's it retails for seventy nine ninety nine, and uh, I saw it on sale. It was only on sale for seventy five, but I was like, hey, five bucks off, whatever. So I threw it in my shopping cart, and I was doing a little more Christmas shopping and stuff. The price dropped five more dollars while it was in my shopping cart. Oh, that's crazy! So I actually got ten dollars off, which was kind of cool. I added it, and it was seventy-five. And then I'm doing some more shopping. I go back to my shopping cart, and it's like one of the items in your shopping cart has dropped in price. And I'm like, sweet! Hell yeah! <laughs> Can't beat that. So uh, otherwise, I you know, like I said, I played the monk to like level thirty, thirty-five, and then went right back to my main, my mage, and. I got him capped out at level 90 about a week ago, and now I'm just kind of doing in-game stuff daily. Is they actually added uh, two really new things to the game, and I, I don't want to go so far as to call it this, but basically they added, like, to the cooking profession, they basically added Farmville. Kind of, it's not Farmville, I'm calling it that, but... Right. There's a zone where you can go, and there's, like, a farm that's, like, instanced, almost. So, like... Um, you can go there, like, me and somebody else could be in the same area, like, almost stand on top of each other, and we won't see them, because it's phased. Right. And, uh, it's cool, because you totally can plant stuff now, like, cooking materials, so you can actually grow your cooking ingredients. Awesome. So instead of going out and, like, I say farming, but, you know, <laughs> but instead of going out and grinding for your stacks of, you know, cabbage or whatever you need for your cooking to level your cooking, now you can actually grow it. And it's cool, because... Um, it's on like a one day cooldown type of thing. So like I could plan it at 11 o'clock at night and as soon as it hits midnight on the servers, it's ready. So I'll usually do that. I'll plant my stuff at night and then two hours later I can harvest it. Whereas most people are going to do it in the morning and have to wait 18 hours or, you know, what have you. Yeah. The new cooking stuff is amazing. That should have been there since the beginning. Yeah. Um, it's really awesome. There's tons of new factions this time around. Like the, the crazy thing about the cooking thing is that in the game previously it was always like a faction like you'd have these different reputations that you'd have to get your rep up with whatever whatever right so the cooking group is called the tillers but within that group there's 10 people individual people that you have to get rep up with now huh and they've never done that before it's always just been a whole group of people whereas now there's actually individuals which is kind of strange it's neat, but strange. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, I want to get my rep with the tillers up, but wait, now I have ten other people that I got to get it up with too. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty cool. They changed fishing around a little bit. They've got a new Matt Pagel, which was always the big fisherman guy in the game. He's uh his own faction now. He's got rep, and you can build up your reputation with him if you catch crazy fish and stuff. Um, the other thing they added to the game, I'm going to call Pokemon, because <laughs> it's basically what it is. Um, it's pet, the, they took the, the mini pets, the little companion pets that you get, right. you can battle with them now. <laughs> so they added a pet battle system, and basically you just build yourself a group of three little pets, or three companion pets, and you can level them all individually. They like start at level one, or whatever level they are when you capture them. Um, they added tons and tons of new pets to the game. I'm talking every zone has like five specific pets for that zone now. So you can go around and do your leveling and be doing pet battles along the way, capturing new pets, getting new companions and stuff. So oh, that's cool. A lot of the stuff that they added for this expansion was really cool. Like I said, I was really, really torn about it if I was going to play or not. But that 10 day trial got me sucked in and. Uh, that's one. That is the reason that I haven't been gaming as much on the Xbox 360 because I've been sitting in front of the World of Warcraft <laughs> once again. But I've I pretty much decided this time around that I'm gonna get my fun out of it and I'm gonna deactivate it. I don't want to pay fifteen dollars a month for years on end if I'm not actually playing it religiously, you know. Yeah. So I figure after a few months, it'll the newness will be gone and you know. 
that'll be that. Well, I imagine this. I mean, this should probably be the last expansion. I mean, I'm imagining so, but then, you then know, again, thought the last expansion might have been the last. one. I thought the last one was the last one. And what's funny about the panda race is that they said they were never going to use the panda race because it was. It's not actually in the Warcraft lore. Yeah, they totally added that race for this expansion. So. It's just kind of strange. Like, is I guess as long as they've got people that are playing the game, and as long as they've got millions of subscribers, why not keep making content? Yeah, I mean, this is the type of game that could last ten plus years. You know, it's already, I mean, it's already been around time. seven, almost yeah. eight now. I think so. I'm not sure. I feel like if they make another expansion and they make that be the last one, I'll be mad because the level cap will be ninety five. Yeah, if you're gonna cap it, Do it, it to should 100. be a hundred. Yeah, so. I don't know. I feel like this one is the first time they did, I think, five levels because the cap started at 60, then went to 70, then went to 80, and then went from 80 to 85, then 85 to 90. So the last two expansions have just been level five level expansions. And I guess once it gets that high, like it's the, the increase is so exponential that 10 levels is overwhelming to get at right. that height. You know, you're getting... 13 million something experience per level or whatever it's pretty overwhelming yeah well, maybe if they did do one last one they would just make it 10 just to make it even higher yeah make the experience gains be higher or something um i haven't uh i've only done two new dungeons um i did the mogushan ramparts i believe or something and there was the a brewery because <laughs> of course the panda race is all about brews like I had to put the title Brewmaster on my guy, and of course I named him after a monk. And, Brewmaster. Yeah. So, but I mean, otherwise, I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, I've been loading it up each day and knocking out dailies and stuff, so. Yeah. That's what's up. So are you back in a guild or clan again? Or I'm still in the same guild that I was in, but I noticed that, uh, I guess right when the, because I didn't get the expansion right when it came out. I was a few months behind because I was still kind of teetering on if I was going to get it or not. My guild must have fallen apart in those few months because I logged in and my guild's like a ghost town now. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, a lot of the, the main character. I mean, my guild leader's still there, but he doesn't log on that much anymore. But yeah, the guild totally fell apart, so I'm half tempted to find a new guild now. Yeah. You know, just to... Do what I, can do. I mean, the guild's level 25. I already got all the perks that I needed, everything from it. So, um, oh, one one other thing I wanted to mention about the game that I really liked back in the day when you would get mounts on your character, like rare mounts from boss drops and stuff. You only could have that mount on that character. So, like, huh. if you were playing on an alt and you got a badass mount, you only had that mount on that character, which would also be frustrating. You know. Right. In this expansion, they made it so mounts were account wide. So all of my cool mounts that I got on glass, I can now use on all of my characters, That's what's which up. is really awesome. I mean, come on! If you're if you spent a year grinding out this crazy mount and you're only going to have it on one character, you want to show that mount off on other characters, you know? Yeah, definitely. And there's a there's a mount in the game now. In the last expansion, there was a, a big mount. It was the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth, and it was like 18,000 gold. Damn. This time around, they've got a mount that's very similar to that. 108,000 gold. Wow. What? I've never had more than a couple thousand gold. I think I've got like 8,000 right now. But seriously, that's, that's insanity. I don't even know how you can get that much gold. That'd be a lot of grinding. I mean... The auction, obviously, with the level increases the way they are, the gold is a lot easier to come by now, so it's not as, you know, not as bad. Right. But, uh, whew, they definitely know how to try to keep you playing. Yeah. I mean, giving you, like, achievements to shoot for that are going to take months to get. There's no way to just do it quickly, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, like I said, I'll play it till I get my fun out of it and then just deactivate it again. And then so, be done with her. Exactly. But oh, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it, man. My my year of gaming has been kind of slack. I feel like I'm forgetting stuff. I made this list here, and I'm like, I know I forgot stuff, but... Oh, well, it was kind of last minute, so... Yeah, I probably should have made a list to begin with, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, yeah, I think it's been a pretty awesome episode, and it's uh, great to have you back on the show. 
Great to be here. And uh, hope we'll be able to have you again uh, sometime in the near future. I'm not sure when I'll be back in town, but I will definitely be here. Oh, and with that, the phone is ringing and we've got to go. Chiming it all out. <laughs> Frag tag out. Peace. Frag tag radio.